You have to have character to play the game of football because it's a lot of guys with natural God-given ability, but you gotta be able to work and you gotta love football to play the game of football. If you don't love football, it will show on how you play and it will show on how you react when bad things happen. When he's on that field, he's emotional. He makes a play, you can see him let it out. He's just the ultimate competitor. Everything he does, he makes it a competition. I don't care if he's competing with a lineman or who can power clean the most, you know what I'm saying? He, he's, a, he's a competitor. He's got that capability to make a big play anytime he touches it in a variety of ways, and as coaches, you just try to use him as many ways as you can. When Stephon Diggs has the ball in his hands, he's electric. He's the kind of guy you build an offense around. You find ways to get the ball in his hand. You gotta have your head on a swivel, have great balance. He has all that. His great instincts. His ability to make people miss is unbelievable. I mean, I think with all that package together, it makes him one of the best receivers in the country. Losing my father really opened my eyes a lot for guidance. My biggest fear in life used to be losing football because I felt like that was all I had and that was the closest memory I had to my father because he started me in football. But now, um, is losing the relationship, the relationships I built with my little brothers and my mom. Stefan's father, Aaron, died when Stefan was 14. There's no good age to lose a parent, but that one might be the worst. You're just starting high school, you're just trying to figure out your place in the world, and all of a sudden, everything is turned upside down. Part of my reason for choosing money to stay at home is because it's where all my family is. And since I lost my father, that family has been a big part of my life, and they've always been there. And I, will, I love to stay by them, stay close to them, and let them support me. When you lose a parent, you have to step up responsibility-wise. I mean, losing your dad, now you're the man of the house. You got to be mature. Grow up faster than what you want. I think that's made him who he is right now. I knew I was going to be like a father figure or somebody my little brother looked up to, and I wanted to be close by them. So if they ever needed someone, they needed to call me, or I didn't want to be a million miles away and I can't see them and look them in their eyes and tell them what to do. That's important to Stefan to be a good person and to be a good teammate and to really try to set the best example he can for a lot of people in his life that he feels that have done good things for him. With everything, I'll just try to find a solution and move forward. And if you can't move forward, then just gotta take care of it. One of my favorite players to cover in Rivals.com history is Stefan Diggs, five-star wide receiver, kid I saw as a true freshman at Good Council, returning punts, uh, and then just had that special vision, acceleration, and ability to be great. He was also a terrific cornerback. A lot of people forget that in high school, but just a dynamic offensive wide receiver, stronger than he looked. Wasn't the biggest kid in the world, but hard to tackle. I saw him in quite a few games where he just made three, four guys bring him down and got extra yardage after the catch for his uh, quarterback in that situation. And, and when he was down, you know, and, and by that I mean when he wasn't targeted enough or when he didn't feel he was getting the ball or when somebody especially jawed at him and got him going, he amped things up even more. He did not want Stefan Diggs playing angry, and that's what he did quite often. Uh, what do you think you have to work for, you know, the rest of the season to really, you know, prove yourself across the country as one of the best wide receivers? Um, as of right now, I don't think too much ever. I get double team, triple team. Uh, I don't think too much ever. I like it. Still, I feel still throw me the ball. Let me go get it. If I don't make the play, that's on me. And it, and my team is behind me for 20, 120 percent. So I feel as if let me make a play, double, triple coverage. I'm, I'm willing to take it. Uh, other than that, on the game. First of all, I want to thank everybody who's been with me through this whole process, throughout my whole life. 
everything I've done, I want to thank God. Uh, he's been with me through everything my whole life, all the blessings I had. Uh, I'm very gifted. I feel like it's a blessing to be here. All y'all here with me. Um, it's time to make that big decision. I feel good about my decision. I feel 100% sure. Um, I want to win championships. I want to win bowl games. Yeah. Where else is a better place to do it than your city? Yeah. Oh. Last night, as I caught the ball, um, he tackled me. When I tried to get up, I told the trainer, don't touch me. I wanted to do it on my own. I want to make sure I'm okay. And I wanted to go walk, and I heard it crack some more. And that's when I said, yeah, y'all got a Grammy. I don't know that it's ever happened before that two receivers from the same team broke their legs in the same game. We went through that together. That was one of the pluses of being injured. Not that ever being injured is a plus. But to have your best friend right there through your recovery, fighting every day that you're fighting, and just seeing how hard he wanted to work to get back. We've been together for a while, and we got hurt together, which was so ironic. And I don't think I could have done it without him, or he could have done it without me. So we pushed through, and now we're back on the field. We just hit it every day, every day, every day. We didn't care what time it was. Whenever I text him, I'm going to work. He's, he's like, well, let's work. You know, we're in our apartment lifting weights. We're outside catching passes. Every day he had a different drill. Every day we was out there working, getting ready for camp. I think it made him appreciate the game a little bit more and knowing how there's nothing guaranteed in life. Campus Insiders continuing coverage of the NFL Draft. Hey everyone, I'm Shay Pepler. I am joined by former Maryland Terrapin, Stefan Diggs. Stefan, so good to see you. First of all, just take me through your last 24 hours, 48 hours since you arrived here in Chicago. What has it been like? And now you're only 24 hours away from the NFL Draft. What's going through your head? Right now, um, it was a great experience. When I first got here, I saw a lot of the guys, gave guys hugs, wished them well. And basically, um, it's a great city. I like, I like being in Chicago. This is my second time around. I was here for the Big Ten Media Day last year. So it's my second time here, and I love it. But overall, going into it, I'm anxious. I'm anxious for a lot of guys. I just want to see everybody do well. What have your conversations been like with different teams and GMs and coaches? Is there a city in particular that you could see yourself in? What has that been like? Uh, I'm getting a lot of good feedback from a lot of teams. I've, t I've spoken with so many teams, I don't, I don't have a clue on where I'm going to go, but uh, a lot of good feedback. So it's no specific city I would like to go to, but hey, man, wherever I end up, I'm going to be happy. I'll be happy with that. You've overcome a couple injuries throughout your career at Maryland. How has that adversity prepared you for this NFL draft coming up? As far as hitting adversity, um, just going into the draft, you're going with an open mind, clear mind. Um, whatever happens, happens. Just pray for the best. Hope for anything. I mean, anything can happen. So I just, I just pray really, really hard.
soon. Stephon Diggs has become the first rookie in league history to have 85 or more yards receiving in the first four games of his career. Nobody, not Rice, not Moss, nobody's ever done that. During the offseason, when we were making plenty of moves, um, I was aware of everything that was going on, and coaches were raving about Stefan, and, and uh, we just knew that, you know, we had gotten a special player. I mean, this kid was drafted in the fifth round, wasn't even active in the first three games of the year. So when it's all said and done, he could end up being the steal of the draft. When I was out those first three games, I never got discouraged. I was on scout team, and I was still sharpening my blade because I knew my opportunity would, would eventually come. I wasn't counting down the days. I was just making the days count more. Yeah, well, when it comes to the connection between the quarterback back in the wide receiver, you know, there definitely has to be some chemistry and um, little things you notice when you're a quarterback. I go back and look at film. I study film. I study how I played it. Well, I didn't burst out of the cut. I looked right away, which made it a harder catch. Yeah, it came out good in the end, but down the line later on in the season, he might be a step slower and you might have to take that burst. I love the approach for Buffalo. I mean, I understand for Minnesota that they've got some issues between Stephon Diggs and Kirk Cousins, and at some point, if it doesn't work and they choose the quarterback, which they've done, and rightfully so, you move on. But I absolutely love this for Buffalo. Buffalo's making it very clear that they think that they can and will win the AFC East next year. I mean, you're looking at John Brown, who's predominantly an outside receiver, and then obviously Cole Beasley, who's their predominantly inside receiver. Now with the addition of Stephon Diggs, who can play both. You're talking about a three wide receiver set that Brian Dayball, their play caller, absolutely loves. Dawson Knox is a young tight end that's really good for them. Singletary at running back and Josh Allen has the opportunity to take another step forward. This is an outstanding move for Buffalo who is clearly making their run to go push for the AFC East Championship crown next year. I love it for Josh Allen and the Bills.
Well, you're, you're both proving it. Whoever wants to jump in here and go first, why did you guys connect so quickly this season? I mean, I, the only thing that I can say is we're very similar. You know, we're both competitive as hell. We both want to win. That's all we want to do. It don't matter how many times I throw it to him. He wants to win. He wants to help this team win, and that's the same for me. I'm just trying to be the best person, the best quarterback that I can be for the Buffalo Bills. Well, hey, Stefan, if someone had told you when you arrived here in Buffalo, you were going to be heading to the AFC Championship game with a chance to get to the Super Bowl, what would you have said? I would have believed him. Just because just the simple fact, playing with this guy, practicing with this guy, he's a guy that can do it. And as a, as a player that you just want to – you just want to play for him, you know? He works hard, he busts his, oh, not the A word, he busts his A word. And uh, I just love this guy, man, that's it. Hey, you guys, enjoy the celebration. Go Congratulations. Let's see the motions, they go, and they put the ball to the flat quickly, somewhere across it. Flops it up in the air. A couple of really good people who love the game, work hard. Chris Jones. Take him down. Howell's still running for his life. Cross the body. Uh -huh. Second and four. Touchdown. And the onside kick at him. Big high hop. And balls on the ground and it is recovered by Buffalo. Clark coming off the edge. Down the middle to go. Turn around. What a catch. Incredible. He could have predicted. Bills coming up. We're going to see them. I have no doubt in this spot.